click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, in the previous lecture we have understood that how can we analyze the percentage of carbon as well as the hydrogen that has been present in the organic compound. So, so based on that only we are going to analyze that is uh, we are going to do that is qualitative analysis of uh, the elements such like nitrogen, halogen and uh, sulfur that could be present in the organic compound. So based on that we have a method that is known as Lazen method for the detection of nitrogen, sulfur and halogen in the organic compound. So let us understand this thing very clearly. <music> So in this method basically we are going to detect that uh, whether the nitrogen or sulfur or halogen that are been present in the organic compound or not. So this kind of analysis is basically known as qualitative analysis. So what does qualitative analysis means? Qualitative analysis means that uh, we are detecting or we are analyzing that organic compound so as to get that uh, which compound or which element uh, is been present in that compound exactly. So that is basically known as uh, qualitative analysis and quantitative analysis it is nothing but the amount of uh, the element that has been present in the organic compound or present in any compound. So based on that we are going to detect uh, the uh, qualitative analysis of the nitrogen, sulfur and halogen in the organic compound basically known as Lazen method. So what does this method and how can we do this method so as to estimate uh, this uh, following uh, uh, elements in the organic compound. For example, the thing that we have to do is or in this method that is we are going to talk about is we have to take uh, the sodium fusion test and what is sodium fusion test let me tell you about that also. So now let me give a brief idea about the laser method for the detection of the elements. So in this thing basically uh, the organic compound for which we have to analyze that how and uh, which elements are being present in the organic compound except uh, carbon and hydrogen that is uh, we are going to detect uh, the nitrogen as well as uh, sulfur and uh, the halogen that could be present in the organic compound. So for that basically we have to take the organic compound and we have to take a small piece of sodium and we have to heat it. So this kind of reaction is basically is done in sodium fusion test where in the sodium fusion test we are taking a small amount of the compound whether it could be solid or liquid and uh, in that basically we are adding a small piece of sodium and we are heating it. So after heating basically uh, the organic compound it will react with the uh, sodium and uh, during uh, a tremendous amount of heat obviously the sodium that will be reacting with uh, the organic compound obviously it will form a particular other compound also and those compounds are basically known as ionic compounds of sodium and what are those ionic compounds and how the uh, reaction will occur. So let me introduce that also that is how the reaction will occur and what kind of certain compounds will be produced if uh, sodium is been reacted with the organic compound. So let me give you a brief idea. Suppose uh, if that sodium that has been uh, that was being used in sodium uh, fusion test along with that of the organic compound and if that organic compound consists of nitrogen in it. So obviously the sodium it will react with uh, the carbon that has been already present in the organic compound as well as it will react with the nitrogen. So during the tremendous amount of heat so this is the reaction that I am uh, showing you uh, that occurs in the sodium uh, fusion test and uh, or uh, that is the reason. So this is the reaction that uh, occurs uh, when uh, the sodium is being reacted with the organic compound in the sodium fusion test and uh, in this case basically the sodium will react with the nitrogen so as to, along with the type of carbon it will produce that is sodium cyanide. So now this ionic compound that has been produced now that would be used uh, to detect whether the nitrogen is been present or not. Obviously suppose if the organic compound consists of nitrogen in it and obviously the sodium will uh, react with uh, the nitrogen so as to form sodium cyanide. And this sodium cyanide is now further used so as to confirm whether the nitrogen has been present in the organic compound or not. So this is what happens if the organic compound consists of nitrogen. But as I have uh, said earlier also that is the organic compound could also consist of sulfur in it. So that is what we are doing this kind of uh, analysis over here. So now we see the sodium that could be reacted with the sulfur that has been present in the organic compound or that could be present in the organic compound. So therefore two moles of sodium it will react with sulfur so as to produce sodium sulfide that is Na2S. And uh, talking about the halogen obviously suppose if the sodium reacts with uh, uh, any element uh, suppose like bromine, chlorine and iodine that is present in the organic compound. So it will react with uh, the halogen and so as to form that is uh, sodium halide. So this three can be produced if uh, uh, that is nitrogen, sulfur and halogen are being present in the organic compound and this uh, are the products that are being produced and those are basically ionic in nature and now this ionic products that have been produced is now basically further uh, we have to do the analysis so as to confirm whether the nitrogen, sulfur and halogen is been present or not. So what are those reactions let me introduce that also. 
So here I am representing those reactions and uh, which will be reacted with uh, that of the sodium fusion extract. So this is the ionic compound that has been produced but uh, the thing is we have to obtain it by using distilled water. Yes, obviously this uh, kind of the sodium fusion uh, tube that is what we have taken and we have added uh, the organic compound along with that of the sodium and we have heated it. So uh, the ionic compounds have been produced uh, that has been present in uh, now that has been present in the sodium fusion test. The ionic compounds that have been produced and that have been present in the sodium fusion and now this are basically they are being dipped in uh, the distilled water and uh, the thing is this ionic compounds which are very much soluble in uh, distilled water so this compounds will be getting soluble in, in distilled water while the rest of the impurity uh, that will not get dissolved and this is how we can extract or we can differentiate this uh, uh, soluble ionic compounds and that is basically known as sodium fusion extract. And because of this sodium fusion uh, extract, uh, that is what we have differentiated uh, and now this would be very much useful in detecting the nitrogen, in detecting sulfur and detecting the halogen that could be present in the organic compound. So let me give you the analysis that how the reaction occurs. So let me tell about the first one that is the test for nitrogen. So what happens and how can we detect whether the nitrogen is been present or not. So that is what we have uh, taken earlier that is we have uh, differentiated the sodium fusion extract I am just representing it by SFE that is sodium fusion extract and what we have to do is for detection of nitrogen exactly. So the sodium fusion extract is been reacted with that is ferrous sulphate along with that of basically this kind of uh, process and this is basically this, this should be hot in uh, uh, nature and uh, the thing is we are heating this thing in presence of that is concentrated H2SO4. So that sodium fusion extract it will react with uh, ferrous sulphate along with that of the concentrated H2SO4 and we are heating it. So after cooling we could find that a blue color PPT is been observed. So if we have observed a blue color PPT then it indicates that uh, the compound or the organic compound consists of nitrogen in it. So this was related to uh, the nitrogen and for the test of nitrogen and now let us move on to the next one that is how can we detect whether the organic compound consists of sulphur or not. So now let me discuss about the next one that is how can we detect uh, the test for sulphur. It is a very simple process again that is uh, the thing that we have to do is we have to take this sodium fusion extract and this is should be a new one. Uh, or else we could uh, basically we could heat the sodium fusion extract so as the so we have to take a new uh, that is a sodium fusion extract or the same thing uh, but uh, this is the new test that is what we are going to do so as to detect the sulfur in it so the sodium fusion extract is basically it is been treated with acetic acid along with that of that is lead acetate and what we have to do is we have to heat it so in this process basically if the sodium fusion extract consists of uh, so in this test basically the sodium fusion extract suppose if that consists of sulfur in it and suppose if that is being basically reacted with acetic acid along with the lead acetate then uh, basically uh, sodium acetate is uh, the one that has been formed and sodium acetate is basically soluble in nature while the rest of uh, the product that is being formed is basically PBS that is lead sulphide and this is basically black color or black PPD we could say. So this can be only generated if the sodium fusion extract consists of uh, sulphur in it and that is how basically the lead sulphide has been formed and this is how we can detect whether the, uh, the organic compound that consists of sulphur or not. So this was the test for sulphur and we could do analysis of that also and now let us move on to the next one that is how can we detect the halogen that has been present in the organic compound that is we are doing that is the test for halogen in the organic compound. So again the same thing that I am going to express that is we have to take the sodium fusion extract and we have to react it with the concentrated HNO3 along with that of that is EGNO3. But halogens are the one uh, that could be chlorine, bromine and iodine. So suppose in that case basically we could get three kind of possibilities 
or three kind of observation we could get that is suppose if uh, the sodium fusion excite is been reacted with HNO3 along with that of it will produce uh, uh, along with that of HNO3 so it will produce certain PPDs and uh, that is basically known as precipitates so suppose if we have got white PPD and suppose that white PPD is basically it has been soluble in uh, ammonium hydroxide then we could say that chlorine is been present in the organic compound and in that case suppose if SFE or that is sodium fusion extract has been treated with HNO3 along with that of uh, AgNO3 and in that case suppose if we have got a pale yellow precipitate or we basically we could also call it as PPD suppose if that is what we have got then we could say that uh, the bromine is basically present in the organic compound and this PPD that has been formed that is this pale yellow PPD it is not that much soluble in uh, ammonium hydroxide and this is basically sparingly soluble in ammonium hydroxide so by that also we could confirm that is bromine has been present in the organic compound or not so now let us move on to the next one and the next possibility is suppose how can we detect uh, whether it consists of uh, the iron in it so the same thing that is whenever the SFE is been reacted with HNO3 along with that of uh, HGNO3 then suppose if we have got a yellow PPD or yellow precipitate and that is basically soluble in NH4OH so we could say that is iodine is been present in the organic compound so this is how we can detect uh, the that is nitrogen sulfur and uh, halogen that are present in the organic compound so this was the test regarding that and that is what I have explained to you so that's it so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you have understood this video very clearly and you have got to know the various concepts behind this and uh, yes we have also understood that is uh, in spite of carbon and hydrogen we could also detect the other elements like this one that are present in the organic compound so thank you friends for watching this video I hope you will share this video with your friends and yes don't forget to subscribe to channel thank you so much